In this video, we're going to be talking about JIRA for business analysts. If you are a business analyst and you're using JIRA, then more than likely uh, you're working in an agile environment. So for this video, we're going to focus on using JIRA for writing, refining, and collaborating on user stories to get them sprint ready. Also, rather than talking about every single feature JIRA possibly has, because JIRA is not just for business analysts, it's for scrum masters, it's for project managers, it's for dev managers, it's for developers, it's for quality assurance analysts. So there's a lot of features and lots of cool things that JIRA does, but we're going to focus on how my team does business analysis work effectively in JIRA. A couple of overarching things um, that kind of set the tone for all the things I'm going to talk about as we go dig into JIRA. Um, is one, our business analyst mission statement. So as business analysts, our job is really to lead our organization to optimal solutions by analyzing, challenging, communicating, facilitating, and ultimately driving towards clarity across six BA core responsibilities, which are the stakeholders, the context, the need, the solution, the change, and the value. And I bring this up and it'll make sense later when we get into JIRA and, and, and I kind of show how my team uses JIRA to be effective on an agile team. It's also important to understand how Scrum kind of works um, and where we kind of fit as business analysts into the Scrum process. And so if we look at this you know, entire diagram of the Scrum process, a BA's efforts fall mostly up here in the beginning in the product backlog where you're creating those stories, refining those stories, and collaborating on those stories so they become essentially sprint ready um, to go into the backlog so developers can work on it, testers can test it. Um, and so forth. And so most of the efforts are here in the product backlog. So as you could imagine, as you know, I mentioned with all those features of JIRA, JIRA facilitates this entire process, but we're really just working in this window right here. Another concept that I want to cover before we get into JIRA is the idea of a functional decomposition. And that really means, you know, when you're, when you have an initiative, when you have a project, when you have a product, you have things that you're doing, you first start with the high level thing that you want to accomplish, and then you break down how you're going to actually accomplish those things. So you start with a high level business capability, and then you break down into functional requirements. Um, if we were to look, to look at that in an agile world, you start with your product and then you create an epic. So an epic is like an, a big feature set or a feature, and that breaks down into user stories. So let's go ahead and jump into JIRA now. Um, so we just talked about those high level kind of epics or features or business capabilities. Um, in this case, in JIRA, they're called epics. In a uh, safe environment, they might be called features, but really they're interchangeable in the scope of how you might use them in JIRA. Um, so if we look at this left panel here, this is kind of your main navigation. I'm already in the scope of a project, so I've opened this kind of mock project that I've created for the sake of this demonstration. I couldn't use a real project from work because there's confidentiality um, issues there and I can't just show you know what we're working on, how to test it, and you know essentially how to break into our systems. So I created this test one. It is important to note for you that I was able to do this totally for free from Atlassian. So if you want to play with Jira yourself, you can just go to Atlassian.net, create a, 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 an instance, and then create a project. It may be a little bit difficult if you don't have a real project to just make up stuff. It's a little bit easier for me because I could think through examples. Um, but you know, that being said, it's free. You can do it. There's nothing stopping you from jumping into this tool and playing around with stuff. So. Let's start from the roadmap level. You can see here I've created a few epics already um, at the roadmap level. Now, a roadmap is usually something a product owner would maintain, you know, with the date that which kind of symbolize the priority. In this case, adding trip attendees would be a higher priority, um, and and they want to work on that first, etc. and so forth. Standard Gantt chart. Um, Jira kind of automatically does that for you, which is pretty cool, pretty convenient. Not necessarily BA work, um, however. Often a BA is involved in creating those high level business capabilities, in this case, an epic. When we take a look here, I've created these uh, five epics that kind of represent um, some, some features that might exist in this travel buddy application, this application that allows you to book a, book a trip with friends, book hotels, book flights, decide what activities you wanna do, and book restaurants. One of the things that I mandate on my team um, in terms of high quality is modeling information. And modeling information comes in a lot of different ways. It doesn't have to be necessarily a visual model. Uh, it could be a textual model. 
And for us, all BAs who are working on an Agile project, if there are epics and features involved, they are responsible to, for making sure that those epics and features are, are written at a high level of quality. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into this first one here, adding trip attendees. Um, so when you are navigating in JIRA, you know, if you click any item, it opens this nice little panel for you so you can quickly see what's there. If you're the BA working on this specific item, more than likely you want to, you're going to want to click into that item. That kind of allows you to focus just on that item and kind of get the full screen so you could do your work. So in this example, um, what I'm showing here is something called an epic hypothesis statement. This is not something that I made up or my team made up. This is an industry standard um, artifact or deliverable um, for an epic. And it's a model that I like because it forces the BAs to essentially ask better questions, really dig into um, how to or what information is important, what information is valuable, to make sure we're doing the right things, we're focused on the right things and so forth. So in this case, if we walk, walk through this epic hypothesis, hypothesis statement, it's for all people who want to manage a group trip. The trip, uh, trip group creator is a way to manage trip attendees and details that can be managed easily in one place. Unlike the current non-existent app, our solution, our solution will make it easier to collaborate on trip details in a dedicated manner. And then the business outcomes are to increase user signups. Lead indicators um, are that one, people are creating trips in the application and they're inviting users to participate and some non-functional requirements. You know, there could be some regulatory requirements, accessibility requirements, usability requirements, and so forth. But this is just an idea of how this might look in JIRA um, and what you might do as a business analyst in JIRA. There's lots of different things that are, are available here for you uh, to kind of walk through it. Um, I've already created some child issues, so it's already populated. But had you have just created this epic and you hadn't created the user stories for it yet, you would be able to come here really quickly, click add, and you could add a new user story. So it lets you create that right away. You could input it here just at a high level. Very useful if you're still kind of in the brainstorming phase of, okay, what things might we need in order to, you know, add attendees to a group? What things would we want at, at in this portion of the application? So you could just add them back to back, bam, 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 without digging into too much detail. In addition to that, you could add user stories and epics from clicking this create icon up at the top. It puts you in the context of the project that you're in, so it automatically selects the project. Um, in this case, it automatically selected a user story type, but I could create several different types of tasks um, and you can populate all this information. So if you want to, if you already have a degree of information that you want to populate, clicking that create option allows you to kind of do the whole shebang um, versus this kind of shortcut mechanism here. Now, if we jump to the side panel over here, um, it gives you a bunch of information that's really more relevant to working on the item versus um, documenting the item. So who is it signed to? Um, you could use labels, teams use labels in different ways. And I'll talk about that more in the user story portion. As you can see up here at the top, there's a bunch of things you could do relative to this um, epic, which is similar to really any of the different types of artifacts that you create in JIRA. You can add attachments. If there's something relevant, you might want to attach. You can add child issues. So, you know, I kind of already demonstrated down here, you could create um, child issues. This is kind of just a shortcut uh, to get there. You can link issues. Um, there's a lot of different reasons to that you might want to link issues. For an epic, there's probably less unless there's dependencies. Um, and you can see here, there's a bunch of different kind of terminology to link them so you can understand what that linkage means. And it essentially just ties one epic or one other artifact to another. You could also link to a Confluence page. So if your team is using Confluence to, to document some information, you could link directly to that page. So if there's something useful there, like a, a diagram or a decision table or something like that, you could link to it right from here. In addition to all that, if we talk about authoring for just a second, it uses your standard um, rich text editor. So you know, bold, italic, you know, strike through all your, the typical basic rich text editor functionalities. Um, this one allows a little bit of colors. At my organization, colors are disabled because they don't want you going a little too wild and willy-nilly with colors. Um, you can attach um, images, you can files, links. Um, there's emojis. Um, depending on what connections that you have in, at your organization, you might even be able to attach things like uh, prototypes or diagrams from, from specific software that integrates directly um, into 
Jira. You can add a table. So this is a table that I've created here. It's very easy to manipulate a table. Um, you could easily add rows. So if I, oops, if I click this plus sign, I'd be able to add another column. If I clicked here, I'd be able to add another row. I could delete the entire thing. Um, so it's really easy to kind of manipulate information um, in Jira when you're documenting whatever deliverable that you're documenting. So as mentioned, you can create a user story in a multitude of ways. You can create a user story here. You can come down here and have like a quick version of creating a user story. And once you create those user stories, those user stories end up in the backlog. So this is my backlog. I've already created uh, several user stories just to kind of show what it might look like populated. Um, I've also created a couple of sprints that haven't started and they don't have anything in them yet. Um, but this is my backlog. So you can see here, I have several user stories. This little icon here kind of indicates what this is. So all of these are user stories. There, there could be bugs as well in a backlog um, created by either business analyst, analysts, developers, or QA analysts. So let's go ahead and jump into creating a user story. So just like in the roadmap space, if I click here, it'll open a nice little quick menu here for me to see kind of what's been documented here. Again, all the issues kind of have the same underlying um, skeleton structure. So you can see there's description here, all the additional fields that are very similar to what we saw on the uh, roadmap uh, component. Um, and then very similarly, I can come here, click this and open it in its own window, kind of full screen so I could focus on it. At my organization, um, we've kind of come up with a, a way to ensure uh, high quality user stories. Um, and that is by having a definition of, definitions of different states of a user story. So in this case, there's raw, refined, and then um, ready for a sprint. Um, we saw an example of a raw user story when we're kind of creating that quick user story where it's really just the title right connect my contacts at that point you don't really have anything in there nobody can develop against that user story but it allows you to kind of see you know where you're at in the process for us refine means that you have that business value statement so we you we enforce the as a i want so that um style and then that you have acceptance criteria and we use on my team gherkin so this is a, an example of gherkin you write out the scenario and then you put the given, so what has to be true for that scenario to start, the action, and then what should be true after that action is true. In this case, I created a custom field called acceptance criteria. You don't have to do that. You could just put that in the description. The reason we put that as a custom field is it allows you to filter on all user stories that don't have ex acceptance criteria. So it makes it a little easier to see which user stories are not quite in a complete state yet. Obviously, you could do the same thing by just filtering on user stories that are in a state of being raw. Um, you know, we talked about those those states of a user story. We define those in the label. So here you can see this user story is refined because there's a, a business value statement as well as acceptance criteria. So what separates a refined story to a ready story is that it's been estimated. And the difference really between an estimated story and a refined story is that a refined story has gone through the back and forth between the product owner, the business analyst, the QA analyst, the developers, and whoever else is part of the development team um, to make sure everything that is everything that is needed to be successful in creating that user story has been documented. Here, at a very basic level, we've only put the, the business value statement and the acceptance criteria, but through that conversation, you might decide that you need a prototype, you need a process flow diagram, you need a decision table, whatever it may be. Th those things come out of refinement and you attach those here. And then once everybody agrees that everything is there and they're happy with what's there and they could, they feel confident that they could estimate what it'll really take to get it done, then it gets estimated. And once that estimation happens, then it is ready, um, also known as sprint ready, meaning that you could add it into a sprint. When looking at some of the items here, you can see that it's very similar to what we saw when working at an epic level. So essentially, once you know how to make one artifact in Jira, you really kind of know how to make them all. The only difference is what things matter for that artifact in terms of doing the actual work. So you can add attachments, you can create subtasks, which 
are often done if there's a lot of things that need to happen for this user story to get done you can create those subtasks especially if there are things that people could be working on in parallel you can link issues so if this is dependent on an issue or you can't work on an issue or this issue until another issue is done you can link an issue and again you can link it to a confluence page if there's one available i created a confluence page just so we can kind of see what that might look like so in this case and we're connecting to Google. So I have a page that just has the Google Contacts API documentation to link it here. Maybe that's something that a developer might need to reference in order to get this story done. So if we go back to the backlog, um, you can see um, this story I left it in refined. So let's go ahead and move this from refined to ready. You can see here it changes. So at this point, from a BA perspective, you've kind of done the work. You've ensured that from a um, epic level or a feature level that those they're written at a high quality. You've ensured that from a user story level, all the necessary information that's going to be needed to be successful is there. And really, this is when the Scrum Master gets involved, the developers get involved, the product owner gets involved in terms of prioritizing these items, adding them to a sprint. So here. Uh, yeah, confirm. Uh, we know um, that this item is ready to go. The estimate is true. We're confident about it, so we can add it into the sprint for whatever that sprint is ready to get started, um, so work can begin. Um, sometimes you might also, you know, if a sprint's already in motion, but you want to start planning for the next sprint, you might start adding items into that next sprint as well. And these little indicators here are, are, are a great way, great way to say, hey, these are the things we want in the next sprint, but they're not ready yet. They're not refined yet. So that's, that could be a clue for you as the BA that you have some work to do. You need to get these items ready, refined and estimated before um, this sprint ends. And so we're ready to go with the next sprint. One thing that I wanted to mention that's very important to understand as a business analyst when we're talking about tools like Jira or really any tool that helps you do the work uh, it's important to understand that you don't need Jira to do any of this. While this is a great tool, it has a great rich text editor, all we did was document information, and a lot of that information could have really been documented anywhere. You could have documented this on a sticky note, on a word pad, in a Word document, in an Excel file. If you're modeling things, you probably would have modeled them in a different application altogether. So it's really important to remember that the quality of a business analyst work um, really doesn't come from the tool that's being used. It comes from their ability to understand what information is the most important to be shared with their stakeholders, whether that's the product owner, developer, whoever, so things can get prioritized, things can get done correctly, things can get tested correctly, and essentially we end up with a good result. I hope that was a helpful look into how a business analyst interacts with Jira. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments and I'll either answer you there or create a whole new video to answer your questions. So subscribe to see your questions get answered and thanks for watching.